Hello and welcome back. We are going right into wedding season. Like fall weddings are always so pretty. I'm always very excited for them and I'm even more excited because the weddings that we do have within the next month or so are Chris's brother and my brother and then ours. So this weekend coming up, we have Chris's brother. So my brother-in-law and future sister-in-law are getting married. I am a bridesmaid in their wedding and of course this I don't think will come as a surprise. I elected to do my own makeup. So I wanted to sit down and see if this vision that I have in my head for my makeup um, can be brought to life. And if I want to tweak anything, better to do it in advance than the day of and like not be happy with something. So I'm just gonna sit here and do my makeup, bring you guys along, show you what I am planning to use, what I'm thinking for my look, how I apply everything, the works. So stay tuned if you wanna see. I am going to kick things off by applying some of this Charlotte Tilbury, this is the Magic Cream. Yeah, Charlotte's Magic Cream. It's an instant turnaround moisturizer. I love this stuff. It's really rich and creamy and luxurious. And if you want to like just really hydrate your skin for a nice plump canvas, which is what I like to do, then you will love this. So my dress that I'm wearing this weekend is this beautiful gold maxi dress from White Fox Boutique. I love their dresses so much. I actually need to take it and have the bottom hemmed since I'm so short um, today, but I've worn this dress in black for another wedding I was in uh, years ago, like four years ago or something. And it was one of my favorite dresses. So when I was on the hunt for what I was gonna wear for this one and saw that it was still in stock and it matched the theme of like what I needed, I was so excited. So I will show you guys like a snip of it at the end. Um, obviously I'll put it on with my makeup and I'll link it down below if you guys wanna check it out because it's so beautiful. So for my makeup today, what I'm thinking is like glowy skin, some pink on the cheeks, just like bright, still summery, glowy. And then I'm thinking like a rose gold eye. I do wanna do some sparkle and I want to like deep in the outer corner, have like a beautiful semi-dramatic eye. Um, but I obviously, I don't wanna match the dress. I don't wanna match my eyeshadow to the dress. So I feel like rose gold will be a good option. I discovered this product lately and I've just been head over heels for it. It's really, really beautiful, whether you wanna wear it alone or um, if you wanna wear it under foundation, which is what I've been doing. But it's the Glowish Skin Tint by Huda Beauty. And I think it's so pretty. I'm wearing light medium. And since I am going for more of a glowy look, I thought this would be pretty to put under my foundation. Um, this doesn't have like a ton of coverage and I definitely wanna do full coverage for a makeup look with photos and everything, but I thought it would be really gorgeous underneath at the very least to add some radiance. And I also just love how this makes my skin look. It's like a little filter almost in my opinion. Um, and I just think it makes it super, super pretty, especially in pictures, at least so far that I have seen. And then to go over it and like even everything out, I am using some of my Frankie Rose Matte Perfection Foundation and this is in the shade Olive. This is definitely a full coverage foundation and it's gorgeous. Um, so I think the two products will be really pretty layered together. But obviously now it's the time to test it out and see um, just because if I end up not liking something, I can change it now rather than the day of. But whenever I'm doing any sort of wedding makeup, like flawless base and like flawless skin is number one always for me. And I absolutely swear by this foundation. When I did do wedding makeup once upon a time, this was what I used for the most part. I would also use the Too Faced Born this way a lot. Um, but this one in particular just always looked amazing on everyone. For concealer, I decided to use the Cover FX Power Play. I used to use this religiously, and you guys know me, I just end up trying a ton of things out. Um, 
and switching products around. So I hadn't used this in a while, but I like rediscovered it as of last week. Um, and this is just a really beautiful full coverage concealer that layers well. And I just I love the way it looks. It looks good in photos and and I don't usually have any issue with this like creasing under my under eyes. So I figured I would go with this one for my makeup this weekend. I also think that it's like really light and I like how it feels on my skin. Like it never feels too heavy or anything. And that is important to me, especially because it's gonna be hot and the wedding is outside. I have been so in love with this Persona Dream Stick or yeah, bronze multi-stick. I think it's called the dream stick, bronze multi-stick. But I have been in love with this thing ever since I first tried it out in that first impressions video. Um, the little contour and bronzer combination that I've been doing has been working really well. It looks good in pictures. Um, it never looks like muddy at all. And I feel like it's the perfect amount of warmth too for my skin tone. So I didn't really want to deviate and try anything new for this just because I know that I like it. I know that it looks good, stays put throughout the day. So we are just gonna rely on this little dynamic duo. Okay, so at the moment, all of my cream products are on, so I'm gonna go ahead and set everything, and this is a really important step in terms of the longevity of my makeup, making sure everything looks super flawless, stays on throughout the day, stays put, doesn't move. That is like number one when it comes to wedding makeup for me and just like things lasting and looking like really, really good. So I'm gonna use another trusty product, which is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder um this just never lets me down i love it it is so beautiful and the way that i set my face i don't know if i've shared this on here at least in a really long time but i take a damp beauty blender i dip it into the cap of my powder and i really really take my time like working it in it may look like i'm starting off with a lot but once you go through and you really press that in, I do that at least twice. So this is what it looks like. And I am just gonna work all of this in to my skin. So I wouldn't say that I necessarily bake because I don't leave like enough on to go back and dust any of it off. I'm just working it into the skin, pressing it into the skin um, in between like, the texture of the beauty blender and then the heat of my skin really melts the product right in to look super flawless. So I don't know if you guys can see a difference in the camera. I definitely can in my mirror, but this is my set under eye. This one has yet to be set. Gorge. And there's no flashback with this, which is a must, especially if there's any chance like you are gonna be in pictures later through the night, like out on the dance floor with a professional photographer and flash, like you don't want that. So this is always just like a safe, safe bet for me. And I just go around and I'm going to lightly set anywhere that I had put concealer. So I set my chin, I'm gonna set around my smile lines just to make sure those don't crease at all. Set my lip just to make sure that doesn't stay like wet or tacky. I don't want like a wet foundation sitting on my face because that's how it can look cakey or move. Set down my nose. And then above my brows. And I guess I don't technically put concealer there, but um, I don't know. It's just something that I've always done and it works well <laughs> for me. So I'm pretty positive I have shared this bronzer before and maybe even this bronzer duo i might have tried this out when i did the first impressions video but my favorite bronzer at the moment is drugstore and it is this ten dollar baked bronzer from milani which i've heard is a good dupe for the i think it's hourglass baked bronzers which is amazing we love that for us um i actually haven't even tried the hourglass baked bronzers yet but um this one here, I'll give you guys a little close up, 
it is stunning it is just really radiant it's not like a glittery bronzer at all but it's also not matte it has like a little something so i personally really love this it layers nicely too like over cream products so this gets my seal of approval for sure Another important little tip or trick that I always do is I still am going to set underneath my contour because this is still wet from my foundation being wet. So I'm just gonna take powder on my little tiny fluffy brush. This brush is so old, but I can't go without it. It's from Eco Tools. I've tried to find a replacement for it. I've tried to find something else to take its place and like update it but nothing has compared so i continue to clean it and use it for all of time um, but then i'm also gonna set down my neck too because i brought my foundation down my neck so this is something that i feel like could be overlooked but in terms of like longevity making sure that everything just looks like really flawless and isn't creasing at all like I set everywhere so there is no liquid powder that, or liquid product, sorry. It's just hanging out there, unset. I ended up doing my brows off camera. I always do that. I feel like brows are so boring. Please feel free to let me know if you feel differently and would like to start seeing me do my brows in future videos. But what I used is this little magical tool. This is from Huda Beauty. I've been using so many other products lately. This is hashtag bomb brows. It's really good. I really like it. It is like a super, super micro fine um, tip and it's double ended. So I'll link it down below. I've really been liking this though. So let's get into shadow. Naturally, I'm drawn to this palette. It's one of my favorites and it just has like a lot of good rose gold tones in here. Um, I really like the matte shades too for blending. I can get the warmth and like the depth that I want with these. Um, at the same time, I really also love this rose quartz shade from the ABH Sultry palette. I don't know about you guys though, I just do not love the ABH matte shades. I don't know why, I just haven't really ever had like a ton of luck with them. So I may just like start off with using this Too Faced palette and then take just the Rose Quartz shade out of the sultry. But let's see, what shall we do? I haven't really been priming my eyes um, in what feels like forever. Um, typically I take my concealer and my foundation over my lids and I just kind of pat them out to make sure there's no creases with my damp beauty blender. But that's really all that I've been doing and it still like works really well. My shadow stays in place really nicely. Um, if you are somebody who does feel like you need an eyeshadow primer though, I swear by the MAC Paint Pots. I used to use them religiously. I still love them, um, but I've just been skipping that step lately. So I always start with the idea that you can add on, you cannot take away. So I'm gonna stick with Seashell, which is more of this like neutral brown shade here. It's just like a good crease color, good transition shade. And then of course, I'll continue to build it up, but that's a lot better than going and just like starting off with Warm Rose. I mean, once you do that, you're kind of locked in. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Nude, this slightly darker brown shade here, and I'm just dusting that onto my lid and into my crease just to start out and like deepen it up a little bit. Right, so I'm just dusting a little bit of the shade Petal um, onto my lid and into my crease to like warm it up and brighten it up just a little. It's this pink color here. Um, so it's really pretty and like stays with that sort of rose gold theme that I was thinking. All right, I'm just taking a little of the shade Maple, which is a super warm brown and I'm just gonna dust that in the outer corner. I don't feel like I'm gonna need a ton of this color. I just want like a little bit of like bright 
warmth, if that makes sense. I don't want to make the look like too purple and I don't want it to end up getting too dark brown. So this shade here, I think is going to be like the perfect balance to still deepen the outer corner, but keep the like shades that I'm thinking. All right. I like how this is looking so far, but I'm going to go in um, to the Sultry palette and get the shade Rose Quartz and apply it. And then I can kind of reevaluate from there. I like to, when I'm doing makeup like this, um, build up the crease, build up the outer corner a little bit, then pop this on to the lid or wherever I'm thinking and then just kind of reevaluate things, as I said, from there and figure out like, what do I want to add, change, anything like that? And I like to apply these shades with my finger. I just think as always that they go on better and like the pigment transfers better than if you're using a brush. I ended up doing my uh, liner and mascara off camera just so we aren't here for 500 years. Um, but I used the Sephora Size Up Mascara. This is only $12. It is one of my favorites. It is like really pretty, gives a lot of volume and length. I just love it. Um, but I'm not really like a falsy lash kind of girl. I just am not. Even for events like this, I just still, I just don't love fake lashes. I do, however, love individual lashes. So I think I'm going to use um, some of these Ardell individuals that I have and add some throughout the end just to kind of make it a little bit fuller and more dramatic. I feel like the lashes made such a big difference. I'm really happy with them. I really just concentrated them on this outer corner here um, just to really add some volume and kind of give like a super voluminous cat eye look. So yeah, this is definitely the way to go. Again, if you are not into a strip lash and want something that's a little bit more like natural looking, it's just gonna take you a little longer to apply than just slapping on a strip lash. But the result is so worth it in my opinion. Um, okay, besides that, just to give you guys some context because I did do this off camera, apologies. Um, I went back over and used this dark brown shadow here in the palette as my liner. Um, I had already done my liner before, but anytime I add a lash, I like to go over it just to kind of cover them up and just make sure everything looks really perfect as much as possible. Moving on, I think we can go ahead and do some blush and then highlight and lips. And overall, we're done. I have been obsessed with this blush shade. I'm pretty sure I shared it in one of my favorites. It is Watermelon by Laura Mercier. And it is the prettiest pink flush to the cheeks if you're into that. Um, it's just the most stunning color and I really, really love it for luminosity and glow. So I am gonna put that on my nose too and then dust it on the tops of my cheek. And then honestly, I know this is drugstore, but it is amazing. I love this little duo from Wet n Wild. This is their blush lighter, um, blush and highlight duo in Have We Met and it's super pretty. I love both shades. The gold is perfect. This corally pink is stunning and I'm I'm always using this. So I like to apply this with a fan brush. You can use whatever, but this I feel like helps to really control the intensity um, and how much, you know, is going on your skin and where. So I like to use a fan brush, but you of course can do whatever you want. I'm sure you guys can tell um, I haven't done anything really with my hair uh, I thought about doing my hair for the video too and I have an idea of what I want to do uh, but I also didn't expect to have a hair appointment yesterday and I just got it blown out um, so I am like on a schedule it is what day is it when I'm filming this it is Tuesday right now. The wedding is Sunday. My hair will absolutely last, but I have to wear it straight for a few days, if that makes sense. So 
you know, you just gotta kind of use your imagination for today's video and <laughs> just pretend like my hair is curled and voluminous and beautiful because um, I'm not gonna be able to do it yet. The Marc Jacobs lip liners are some of my absolute favorite, especially for wetting. They glide right on and they last for a very long time. Uh, this shade Primrose is one of my favorites, but as you can see, I'm about out of it. Like there, there's nothing left, but I'm gonna try to make it work. I'm also so sad because I have heard that they're discontinuing the Marc Jacobs Beauty line like completely. So we're not even going to be able to get these anymore. Um, hopefully that means like they're discounted for a little bit so you can grab whatever is left. So if you can get your hands on one of these lip liners, do it because it's so worth it. Uh, but really, really sad that they're doing that. All right. I got to switch this. This is dead. I'm not not getting any out so brb i feel like this is going to be exactly the same this is the shade dusk from persona cosmetics um i really like their lip liners a lot they glide right on too wow that's almost a perfect match so good news for you guys if you wanted to try primrose out from Marc jacobs you should pick up you should pick up dusk instead from persona cosmetics so the lipstick that I want to use for today's look is Heartthrob by Buxom. I like to do, especially for weddings and events, like a contrasty sort of lip that still like blends well, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna do a lighter pink. I always love light pink with my skin tone and I think it'll look good with this look and the dress and everything. So let's see. So pretty. I honestly may have to do this combo for my own. Just gonna overline a little more. This lipstick is honestly so like creamy and hydrating um, that you technically don't need a gloss, but I've been really into both of these glosses lately and I think either would be stunning on top. So I just need to decide which one to use. Um, this one is by Tarte, it's the H2O gloss in Sandy Toes. Look how pretty that is. I think it'll just like bring the whole look together. Other one that I'm very much into right now is Lucid Glow by L'Oreal. These are their, oops, sorry. These are their Infallible Pro Gloss Plump. I don't know why I can never, I can never say the name of this. Um, both feel really good. This one is a plumping gloss. This one, I don't think it is, but let's just try the Tarte one. Ooh, that's pretty. And then we need some setting spray. I've been loving this one lately, the Stay Spray by Tarte. It smells really good too. Like kind of refreshing, but kind of like florally. I don't know, I just really like it. And I like how like fine the mist mister is, nozzle sprayer <laughs> is. Um, like it's really fine, but it also disperses super evenly. So I don't know, I really have been liking this. I do two rounds of sprays for good measure. Here is the final look. Just we're improvising with the hair, but I just got really excited because this is the first time that I've put my dress on. I feel like I need to show it to you guys. I'm literally about to go get it hemmed and take it to the tailor right after this video. But hopefully you can see it a little bit. This is the beautiful Maxi in the shade Champagne. Like look at the back. It's open. It's so pretty. You all can see this. Um, I guess I gotta work on my tan back there, but it's really, really gorgeous. I love this dress. It's just a little, what is that? It's a little too long right now, but just envision my bouquet. Anyways, I am so happy with how everything turned out. I really like my makeup. I'm definitely um, gonna stick with everything that I did today. There really isn't anything that I would change. I'm super happy with it and love how it turned out. Like everything from the shade of the rose gold that I was thinking of for the shadow to the lip color, the blush, all of it. I'm just super happy with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you like this makeup look and I definitely will be posting 
posting pictures at the end of this weekend so you all can see my final look and the wedding look and all of that. I was trying to think of like when this video is gonna go up and my goal is that it goes up before the wedding. So hopefully you guys will have seen the video and then pictures to come and not the other way around. But regardless, I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning back in and watching. And until next time, 